Hello and welcome back. So what I want to talk to you about today is AM radio. And in particular, look at why the regular AM broadcast is considered inefficient from a power point of view. Now that's something strange to say about the transmission method, because I'm not talking about the amplifiers or the antennas or any of the hardware being used as inefficient, but rather the principle behind how AM is being encoded is the inefficient part. And of course, if there's an inefficient way to transmit AM, there's also an efficient alternative, which is used, but not for the commercial broadcast. So what I want to do today is look at both why the regular AM is inefficient, what's the efficient alternative, and what's the reason behind not really using that. So if you're curious, then keep watching. So let's start things off by looking at an actual broadcasted AM signal. Now about 23 kilometers away from the city I live in, in Orzishwara, is the location of these two very nice antennas, which are the transmission site for the Radio Timisoara broadcast. These are transmitting at 630 kilohertz, and the power of the transmission station is about 400 kilowatts. So from the rather short distance of 20 something kilometers, it shouldn't be that hard to measure the signal coming from these antennas. And to do just that, I prepared a basic little setup. So what I got here is a bunch of wire wound around a plastic shape to form an inductor. I've got a variable capacitor, which coupled with the inductor is forming a filter. The inductor is connected to a long piece of wire that goes all around the room, which is my antenna. It's around three or four meters of cabling. And then this filter is connected to the first channel of the oscilloscope. And you can see that there's some sort of signal there, which if we check is at around 630 kilohertz. So just to make sure we can also check this with the cursors and it's the 630 kilohertz signal of the Radio Timisoara transmitter. Now, if we look at the signal on a different time scale. So if I increase this time scale, we will see that first of all, it's quite a strong signal. So I have 500 millivolts per division and this is taking up multiple divisions. And at the same time, we can see that it's not a continuous signal. So we can see that its amplitude is going up and down, hence the term amplitude modulation. But at the moment, the signal is at 630 kilohertz, so it's not very audible. But we can fix that by adding a rectifying diode. So my second channel of the oscilloscope is connected to a diode and to a filtering capacitor. And what we get on this channel is a much slower signal, so the frequency is much much smaller. And let me just move it along a bit. We can see that it exactly follows the envelope of the AM signal. So what my detector is doing is extracting the outer envelope of the signal. And that's where our audio signal is being contained. And the really nice thing about AM and the way it's being broadcast is just how simple the setup to receive it is. I mean, you don't need an oscilloscope, but you can replace it with something like a pair of headphones, and you can listen to whatever they're transmitting. And for regular AM, this is all that you need to form a basic crystal radio receiver. You don't need any amplifying elements, you don't need a battery, you don't need anything else. This will be enough to receive a strong signal. Now, rather than looking at the signal in the time domain, let's see how the signal looks also in the frequency domain. And for that, I've connected the signal present on the LC circuit to the analog discovery tube and set it into spectrum analyzer mode. Now, the frequency range that we're interested in is around the 630 kilohertz range. So I'm looking between 605 and 655. So if I just select a single capture, we can clearly see a massive central spike at 630 kilohertz, but we can also see that there's signal a bit around it. So it's not just here, but the 
signal coming from the radio transmitter is split to the left and to the right a bit. Now in technical terms the central spike is called the carrier and the two lobes to the left and to the right which should be symmetrical are the sidebands. And basically the audio information is contained in the sidebands not in the carrier. The carrier should be roughly constant and depending on what sort of information is being transmitted the audio spectrum is added to the left and to the right of the carrier. So the bandwidth occupied by the signal is the carrier plus minus 5 kilohertz for the regular AM band. Now to get a clearer picture of this let's look at some simulations. So what I got here is a modulator block that can be found under the special functions and by setting the FM input to a constant voltage and inserting a sine wave into the AM we can obtain a nice amplitude modulated signal. So what I created here is a 100 kilohertz carrier with a 1 kilohertz amplitude modulated signal overlapping it. Now if we look at the FFT spectrum of this signal and we zoom in a bit we see the same thing that we've seen with the actual radio signal. We see the central spike at exactly 100 kilohertz which is the carrier and then the audio information so 1 kilohertz here is to the left and to the right of the carrier with exactly the same amount. So 100 kilohertz plus 101, 100 kilohertz minus 1, 99 kilohertz. And this is what the spectrum of the AM looks like. You have the two sidebands and the carrier. This is why regular AM is also called double sideband full carrier transmission. Now coming back to the efficiency topic and looking at the signal spectrum well, we can already see that the strongest signal here is the carrier, but that's not transmitting any information. All of the audio information is in the sidebands, so we can skip the carrier completely. And at the same time, regarding the sidebands, we can also say that, well, both of them have the exact same information, so we only need one of them. So to make AM more efficient, what we could do is skip the carrier completely and skip one of the sidebands completely and just be left with either the lower sideband or the upper sideband and just transmit that. Now to illustrate what this would look like we can look at the signal in a different way. So we can generate the exact same amplitude modulated signal using the free base components. So here I have an 101 kHz sine wave, a 99 kHz sine wave and a 100 kHz sine wave with the mention that the 100 kHz carrier has a double amplitude than the sidebands. And if we look at this signal, we get exactly the same thing as with the amplitude modulated block. So we can create our amplitude modulated signal from the various components. Now if we compare this to the signal that only contains one of the sidebands and we rerun the simulation, two things become obvious. On the one side, the signal that only has a sideband is, well, it doesn't really look like an amplitude modulated signal anymore but it's also much much smaller in amplitude. If we drive the two signals into a certain load, so to represent an antenna or something, so I added 50 ohm loads and I gave some names to the two signals, so the double sideband full carrier and the single sideband. So now if we look at the powers dissipated on the two resistors, just like with the voltage amplitudes, we see that the regular AM has very high peaks compared to the single sideband version, but also if we compare average powers, so on one side we have about 59 milliwatts, on the other about 9.810, so we have a reduction in average power of about 6 times, and we also have a reduction in peak power of about 16 times. So by transmitting AM in the single sideband version, you have an extreme reduction in both average and peak power. So why don't we really use this? I mean it is used, it's mostly used by radio amateur transmissions, so in the ham radio bands also certain services use this sort of AM modulation, but not really the commercial reception. And the reason for this has to do with the complexity of the reception equipment. Now to decode SSB you will need other than your tuned LC circuit 
also a local oscillator called a beat frequency oscillator, and also a type of mixer called a product detector. This way you can extract the usable audio information from the transmitted signal. Now, this sort of circuits are not that simple or easy to build. And it's worth mentioning that radio is one of the major inventions that became popular in the early 20th century, when electronic components were not that easily available or cheap. I mean, for large companies or for state-owned civilian applications or, well, even the military, price didn't really matter. But for the average consumer, most electronic components had very restrictive prices for most of the 20th century. So given the choice of a simple but inefficient transmission method, or a more efficient alternative but which has far more expensive reception equipment, AM was left to be easily accessible. This can be considered one of the main reasons why AM radio became so popular, because people were actually able to listen to it without having to spend the fortune on the reception equipment. Now, even to this day, if you want to build a very simple electronic circuit that will do something interesting, one of your best choices will be an AM radio. I mean, the complicated part behind the AM radio is with the transmitter, but somebody else is doing that. So as long as you can build the basic crystal radio, you will have a circuit that, well, it will work, and it's quite hard to get it to not work, and it will offer quite interesting entertainment for some time. And for most people that got started in electronics, me included, that was the way it began. So the very first circuit that I actually got working was an AM crystal radio. But all in all, AM is inefficient and it doesn't sound that good because of the bandwidth. So we won't be having AM around for long. So take advantage while you still can. And on that note, hope you got some useful information out of this. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to be up to date with all my videos. And see you next time. Bye bye.